they are in our homes, augmenting our comforts, serving our needs. When we take to the open road, we find them again in our car. Plastic, plastic, plastic. 60 years ago, it was called an amazing invention, but its durability has become an environmental curse. Billions of tons of plastic has been made over the decades, but around 90% of it hasn't been recycled. I'm Emma Keeling in Gothenburg, Sweden, where a group has developed a process that can chemically recycle all kinds of plastic so that future production will not have to use more fossil fuels. Morning, Professor. Yeah, good morning. Thank you so much for having us. I'm really fascinated what you're doing here. So is this the plant over here, is it? Yeah, the plant is over here. So why is it so hard to recycle plastic? Yeah, plastic in itself is not really so hard to recycle. The, the problem is that it's actually too cheap and simple to produce from the residues from refineries and from the gas industry. As usual, it's always about cost, isn't it? But I mean, so what you're telling me is that you can recycle every single kind of plastic here. Yeah, Germans. we can recycle all the plastics, but we can also do plastics from other kind of uh, carbon sources like wood chips or from uh, used uh, clothes or whatever. At the Chalmers University Experimental Plant, Professor Henrik Thunmann and his team see plastics resilience as an asset. It means it can be broken down to a molecular level and transformed into new plastics. And they do this on an industrial scale. 10 tons are dropped off at the back door. Thank you. Hello. Hello. Yeah, this is Jelena. Hello. So she will Hello. present you for how to do the experiments here. We usually run around 390 kilos per hour into the system. Wow. That is so. And so all that all that plastic has just been recycled that quickly. Yeah, well, in the, on a daily basis, uh, one can say that it's nearly uh, 10 tons per day if one runs continuously 24 hours. Fabulous, wonderful. Before we see plastic recycled, we need to understand how it is made. It starts with crude oil, which contain long-chain hydrocarbon molecules. When distilled in a refinery, the oil is separated into fractions, which are a mixture of hydrocarbon chains. One of these fractions, naphtha, is the crucial compound used in plastics. Its long chains are diluted with steam and briefly heated in a hot furnace to crack the chains into smaller molecules. Different plastics are made up of different molecular structures of carbon and other elements. The researchers have tested all kinds of plastic at different temperatures and have successfully broken them down into the desired molecules. Crew fuel, it, which is a residue from the car recycling, which is almost everything that we mix together. It's All the nasty really, stuff. This is really nasty. It's like <laughs> no one wants this one. And then we have the cable plastics. Right. One other part, which is some metal, but mostly polyethylene and some simple. And we also tried and the pure polyethylene. To produce virgin plastics, they use the same process that creates it, with one important addition, sand. The sand, or bed material as they call it, is heated using waste wood chips delivered to the university, which release less CO2 than fossil fuels. This is where we actually take this bed material, which is at this state around 800 to 900 degrees. And it's like 20 to 40 tonne an hour that comes this way which we then direct into the steam cracker. Aha! It's impossible to see the process in action, so to help people understand, PhD student Anna Kurler has built a model. The white powder represents the sand. It's transported up by air and flue gases from the combustion of wood chips where the sand is heated and by steam in sections where the plastic is converted. So the sand is heated here and then over here, is it then mixed with the plastic? So this part is the combustor, where you do the heating of the sand. And it takes up the bed material as it's heated. And then the sand is separated from the flue gases. And the flue gases go out one way and the hot sand goes into the next reactor. And this reactor, you feed it with steam. And you feed in the plastic. And so this is the, like the steam cracker? Yeah, this is the steam cracker, this part. So then you crack 
the plastic into its different molecules. It's getting hotter and hotter. Yeah. So the hot sand is actually coming down in that corner on the other side that uh -huh. we just looked at. And then we have the feedstock, the, the plastic, recycled feed plastic, that is actually falling down into this hot bed material. Okay. And then we use this steam that we are taking from here to get this movement of the sand. And then inside of this, the, the sand leaves its heat to the plastics and then break it down into the molecules. And the gas is that is produced and is then transported away in this pipe up here. The plastic, which is now different gases, will later be split up to make chemicals or new plastic. So all gas that we are producing when we uh, put in the plastic in the reactor, we are directing here and uh, drying it so we can uh, send uh, dry gas which contains carbon monoxide, uh, hydrogen, light hydrocarbons, and methane as well. So it's a mix of a different gases which we analyze so we can, depending on the composition, discuss how it can be further on utilized, which kind of chemicals we can recover. So the other part of the gas which contains aromatic fraction, we are sampling and uh, analyzing in our uh, special lab. Aromatic fractions are ring-shaped carbon compounds, the simplest of which is benzene. The more complex the compound, the more rings it has. Here is uh, Jessica is doing analysis of the aromatic fraction that we have sampled in our product gas. So as we can see here on uh, chromatograms, as the result of the analysis, we got the majority of those uh, chemicals that are valuable, uh, uh, such as benzene, toluene, styrene and naphthalene. So you make some money out of the, the system as well as doing the good with the recycling of the plastic? Exactly. But most of the aromatic compounds formed are not valuable and can only be used as fuel in the combustor, which is where the sand and the impurities attached also goes. And on the bed material then you get all these contaminants, so the carbon and the ashes and fillers and other things. So they then follow with the bed material back into the first part where you do the combustion. And then it just goes round and round and from the combustion side, then you take out the ash components and so on and regenerating the bed material at all the time. So you can operate this continuously. So you're not constantly putting out all sorts of horrible gases into the atmosphere? No, we clean it extremely well. So what we do is actually that we have a cleaning system on our system that meets all regulation for a waste incinerator. So we can actually do waste incineration in the middle of the city. The temperature and time in the process can be adjusted to deal with the combinations of different plastics and biomatter. Depending on the fuel used, they can convert 65 to 90 percent of the plastic waste back into virgin plastic. So this is what we are going for with our cracking. So this is the virgin plastics once again. Wow. So we have we started with all these different products that we saw out in the power center with the wood, with the, the proof fuel, with the waste material and then we get down to the molecules and then we get back to the virgin plastic again which means that we can start the, all over again with new plastics. The Chalmers researchers have shown how plastics can be transformed back into their original quality in a cost-effective way and they're confident it could be integrated into the existing infrastructure of plastic factories. Someone needs to go first and this is of course what we are doing. We are looking in and we have discussion with companies and of course it's some companies that have pushed us in this direction and that's, therefore we also can work in this scale. But it will cost them, they're going to have to outlay some money to, to put this, implement this process. Yeah, you have to pay, but it's the same for any technology. The good thing here is that the feedstock that we talk about is something that the regular customer pay to get rid of. So they have a more or less free feedstock if they get hand of it. Plants would require one to two million metric tons of plastic waste per year to match the production levels they reach through fossil fuels. But it could create a market for collection. Plastic could become the wonder material it once was, but the world will need to change its manufacturing and recycling systems or continue to choke and contaminate our land and waterways. This world of the molecule belongs to us all. It is yours to explore your new frontier.